Hi friends, we're in the country of Malaysia, about 13 miles north of Kuala Lumpur, at the Batu Caves, where you can find the largest Hindu shrine in the world. They call it Lord Murugan, where tourists and faithful Hindus come from all over the world to look at the caves and this colossal statue. A giant Hindu shrine requires a giant donation box. We're thinking about putting one like that in our church, but I'm not sure the board is going to go for it. Costing approximately 24 million rupees, the Lord Morgan statue took 350 tons of steel bars, 1,550 cubic meters of concrete, and 300 liters of gold paint to build the statue. Lord Morgan is depicted holding a spear. The spearhead, or vel, is a symbol of victory in the Hindu faith. The main cavern in the Batu cave system is the Temple Cave, and it has an incredibly high ceiling reaching 100 meters. It's so large that the 140-foot tall Murugan statue could have easily been built inside of it. The Temple Cave entrance is shaped like the spearhead of Lord Murugan, and this is why the location was chosen as a worship site for the Hindu god in the late 19th century. This Hindu statue was built in 2006, but it's not the tallest statue in the world. As recently as 2018, with the unveiling of the Statue of Unity in India that was dedicated to Sadar Patel, it stands, including the pedestal, at almost 600 feet tall. And there's a statue of Buddha in mainland China that's almost as tall, 420 feet for just the statue. This growing number of ginormous statues around the world makes me think about the Book of Daniel, where King Nebuchadnezzar first has a dream of this giant statue, it's really an idol, with the head of gold and the arms of silver and the belly of bronze and the legs of iron and the feet of iron and clay. It represents all the kingdoms and the religions of the world that are ultimately pulverized by the stone, a symbol of Christ and his coming to the world. And then in Daniel chapter three, the king tries to reproduce his dream but he makes it all of gold, and he commands the whole world to bow down, and those that don't bow down will face a death penalty. Of course, we're thankful for the example of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that would not bow down, and Jesus delivered them through the fiery furnace. These two chapters in Daniel 2 and 3 remind me of Revelation 13, where it warns us in the last days that this beast's religious political power is going to compel the whole world to worship the image to the beast. Those that don't, first they can't buy or sell, and ultimately there will be a death decree. But God's people will be faithful because they'll be keeping the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. Friends, you know what those commandments are? You know, the second one says, do not make and bow down to images. If you like what you've seen, then subscribe to the Amazing Facts channel. You know you want to. Do it now.